I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it, I'm moving it. The city is where I'm made, Bostonian flow. I kick it a back day, yeah, I got game. Got in a fan way, we the city of the champs. Every sport we play, spin wetter than the harbor, yeah. I'm flowing like the Charles. I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles. Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock, and I'm always key. I'm ready to unlock. I be doing big things, don't even have a deal, yeah. I battle through these. Welcome back everyone to the newest edition of Once a Week. I'm Billy Jan Lutis and guys, we have an incredible, an incredible special guest for you here today. He is a former Buckingham Brown and Nichols alumni where he won the 2012 Gatorade Player of the Year Award. He didn't stop there. He took his talents to Nashville, Tennessee to attend Vanderbilt University where he was a member of the 2014 College World Series Championship. And guys, the story does not stop there either. He was drafted in the third round of the MLB draft by the Washington Nationals. He was a member of their organization as they took their 2019 World Series championship. And recently, before COVID destroyed everything out there, he was prepping to take the level of AAA. Guys, I give you Rhett Wiseman. Rhett, thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. And again, Brett, I thank you so much for being here. You've had an up and down career because COVID has taken it everywhere. Right. Right? So how is, well, let's just start with that. Before we dive into all your accomplishments that you've done so far, what's COVID like in an organization, a professional organization? Well, you know, Bill, it's tough because you, you train, you know, all off season yep. for a season. Yep. Right? Exactly. So you have six months where you're prepping every single day yep. to start spring training you know, March 1st, yeah. February 15th. And you allot your time, you allot six months, right? Every mm -hmm. day is important, every hour is important, every 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 training segment yeah. is important. And there's a purpose behind it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a purpose um, in, in, in your planning to yeah. get ready for a season. So when you show up and you've put in six months of work and you're ready to hit the ground running, you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, and then to have that kind of stripped and pulled out from under you. Mm. And then the way it turns out, there is no season. Yeah. Right. Um, and obviously I know that I'm not the only one that went through that. True. Right. You yeah. know, I feel like, um, the majority of people in, in the world or in, at least in our country yeah. have, have been in, in a similar role this year. So, um, you know, being a part of a, a pro organization that doesn't have a season, yeah. you know, that, that off season that you have to train and, 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 and get ready for a season goes from six months to yeah. now 18 months, Exactly. right? So yeah. now we're kind of in this weird spot of, well, will we have a season next year? True. Yeah. In light of that question of, will we, will you have a season? Have you been pushing yourself training wise to get yourself to an even higher level in this area that we're in right um i think that's a really good question for for two reasons yeah. one because the obvious answer is yes yeah. you have more time to train exactly right i think the the more difficult part of that question is how do you get better mm -hmm. how do you develop right yeah. and i think the the best way to develop in any sport is to play it yep and unfortunately with baseball True. it's not a sport that you can go out and play on your own exactly right you need uh you need bat. You need at bats. You need you know game reps, um, and now you can simulate that stuff. But uh -huh. true development is 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 gained from playing the sport. True. So when you have guys, older guys like myself in organizations, these years of development yep. are gone. Yeah. You know, two thousand and twenty mm -hmm. is a developmental year that guys yeah. will never get back. You yeah. know, and. Um, that goes for high school players. That goes for college players. That mm -hmm. goes for, I mean, you look at some leagues that didn't even play this year. Yeah. Um, so, you know, without that year of development, I think it definitely hurts. Mm. To answer your original question, yes, I have been, you know, yeah. really busting it and, uh, you know, trying to get myself into the best shape for a season, even though I don't know when that will be. Yeah, true. Um, but it's really hard when you miss out on all that development. I get that. I get that. And, you know, you just said so many key points that, you know, kids watching this, baseball players watching this, athletes in general watching this, take that, take it even different. Anyone watching this right now, whether it's in the classroom, office, or an athlete for that matter, you keep putting the work in. You don't know when that time's coming, but you keep putting the work in to make sure you can excel when the time comes. 
and it will come. You know, at some point, COVID will end. I said something in a message a while back um, with another special guest. 2020, everyone keeps bringing up the question of 2020. Oh, when will 2020 end? When will all this end? And I threw out there, like, 2020 ends when you believe it ends. Meaning, you make the switch when you're going to excel yourself to that next level. And everyone's like, oh, 2021, which is in a couple of days for everyone. But, you know, you're putting the work in since they told you you didn't have a season. Right. All right, I'm ready for next season. Even if that is five months, 18 months, wherever it may be, you're ready. You know, and that's something I think people can take away from that. It's like, be ready, because at some point you're getting that call. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, with what we did in the intro, all your key points, I feel like that will coincide with everything we just said on the COVID stuff. So when you were in high school, you won the 2012 Gatorade Player of the Year Award, right? And then you took your talents to Vanderbilt, where you guys won the College World Series, and you had a number of accomplishments there as well. In every level you've played at, high school, college, and in a professional standpoint as well, how were you able to excel to the next level and keep pushing yourself? Because I know every kid that starts out, you know, middle school, high school, that's when your dream really starts to come to you. Right. It's like, you know, I want to be a professional baseball player. And you keep pushing yourself, you've got the right people around you, whether that's your parents, your coaches, your friends, whoever it is. How were you always able to get to the next level and be like, I'm going to keep going and keep pushing yourself? Because I feel like in a lot of college kids that I come across, they do reach a level of burnout where it's like the dream is like, can I, can I keep going? And you've been able to keep going all these years. Yeah. How have you been able to do that? Well, you know, I think that's another great question. I think it's multidimensional, mm -hmm. right? It's multifaceted. Um, that question boils down to I, I, an internal drive. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that internal drive is fueled by my love for the game. Nice. And, um, I do. I love the game of baseball. It's awesome. I, you know, me as a person, the way that I am, the way that I'm wired is I want to succeed at everything I do. Nice. So whether that's in baseball, whether that's off the field endeavors, whether that's, um, you know, mowing the, mowing the grass. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? I, I'm trying to win all the time. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, I'm so competitive in that regard that mm -hmm. I don't let myself off the hook. Nice. I am unbelievably hard on myself. I get that. To the point where, you know, if I can't even pick up another weight in the weight room and I'm done, I say, well, you know, someone else is, is going to do that last rep, you know? True. And I think that's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, I get that. Um, but, you know, when you read off accomplishments and that sort of thing and you look back and you say, well, you know, how were you able to achieve that? How are you able to get yourself into that situation to get that opportunity yeah. Yeah. to succeed, exactly. right? Because as you know, and as you know, you've talked to these people watching at home, mm -hmm. success doesn't just happen, exactly. right? It's, it's preparation over time. It's yep. preparation, it's preparation, it's perseverance. Yep. And then you get that opportunity, yeah. get a little bit of luck, and you do it, and yeah. then you go, oh my gosh, I just did it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So um, number one, I'd say internal drive. Mm -hmm. Second off, and this is what I feel is the most important. Now, a lot of people might not have that internal drive, yep. right? And that's just part of it. Some people, everybody's wired differently. Definitely. Um, and I've played with a lot of guys and some, you know, aren't wired like that. Yeah. Some guys are just, you know, different. Some players are different. Um, you know, some people at home, they, they know that about themselves. Maybe they're not, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of crazy, you know, singular focus, yep. Yep. one track mind sort of people. Um, and for people that are built like that, the, this, the second point that I'm going to make yep. is, you know, it doesn't matter what your drive is because anybody can do this mm. and it is preparation Yeah. and preparation, I believe is the number one leading cause of confidence. Mm. It's the main proponent, I should say, yeah. to confidence. Nice. Um, I've never done something without confidence mm -hmm. that I wasn't prepared for. Yeah. You know, and I I bring a lot of my confidence to situations because I'm prepared for them. Yeah. Now, there might be a situation that I'm ill prepared for and I might not be confident. Yeah. For example, Bill, if you came to this interview today and mm -hmm. you hadn't done your homework, mm -hmm. you might not be confident in some of these questions you're asking. <laughs> True. Right? Yeah, very true. But instead, you do your homework, you yeah. study, you write everything down, you're prepared. Yeah. You're confident 
when you list attributes of, of yeah. my past. You're exactly. confident when you ask me questions. That goes for anything. That's true. That goes for a, a meeting in the office. That yeah. goes for, you know, when I am up in the in the ninth inning and they, you know, the other team brings in a left-handed specialist to mm -hmm. face me and throw me all breaking balls. That's right. And I know that week, two days ago, yesterday, I spent two hours off the machine yeah. facing left-handed breaking balls. Yeah. Instead of being, oh my gosh, I haven't put my work in, I'm not ready for this, I go, hey. I step out of the box, I go, hey. I've that busted was... my butt for the past two days. Yeah. I've seen 200 breaking balls from a lefty, I'm good. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And, and and that's one of the main things I think can can put people in positions where they can be confident and be ready to succeed. Mm -hmm. And if you're ready to succeed yeah. and that opportunity comes to you, yep. that's all you can do. Exactly. I love that because it's it's so true that when you prepare yourself, everyone that lets fear into their life somehow, it tries to take the confidence away. But if you are prepping yourself, you're preparing yourself, when you really need to take that final step when the opportunity comes, it's like that. Because you built up so much behind you. It's like, like you just said, when you're at the, at the bat and everyone and like, oh, take a step back, I've done this. Right. And so anyone pre prepping for that, whether it is someone at home right now, whether it's a kid about to take a test, whether it is an athlete getting ready for a race, for a game, for a match, whatever it is, prepare yourself and just one, enjoy those moments. Because I feel like if you're preparing yourself, you know that opportunity is coming and that allows you to enjoy the moment knowing this is gonna pay off. Definitely. This is gonna pay off. And like you said, I can write down your accolades. You achieved them. You prepared yourself to achieve them. You knew they were coming, maybe not at the time. Looking back, you can see that confidence grow in that kid that yeah. got to the level you're at right now. That's huge right there. Yeah. Plus, take it even a step further, it's a huge mindset game. You know, you said the, the competitive edge that you have can be a blessing, it can be a curse sometimes. That's a mindset. Does that ever trip you up? How has that tripped you up, if it has? Yeah, you know, I'm also in a, in a little different scenario with the game of baseball mm -hmm. because, you know, if I hit 300 yep. in a season, I'm failing seven times out of 10. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm an all-star. Yeah. You I know what you. I mean? Yeah. So, I deal with more failure yeah. playing baseball than some people will experience in their lives mm. in their regards, right? That's true. If if people at home are watching and you're working at a business and you're failing seven times out of ten, at the end of the day, you might not have a job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's true. I deal with all this failure all the time. And that is, you know, I see guys who are unbelievably talented. I've played with a so many amazing players who have been unable to mentally understand how their failures affect them, yeah. right? So this game, baseball, the game of life, it is a game of, of quick recovery athletes. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a term that I learned in college that I still use today. Yeah. And what that means by, by quick recovery is how able are you to face adversity, mm -hmm recover from that, yeah. get back on your feet, and get the job done, Yeah. right? In baseball, I can be 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, right? Mm -hmm. And go into the ninth inning and come up with a game-winning run on second That's base, true. and I need to come up with a hit, yeah. right? Now, am I going to put that failure of my last three at-bats behind me, mm -hmm. bear down, and get the hit my team needs to win a game? Or am I gonna let those past three at-bats yeah. affect my fourth one, strike out again, have another bat at-bat, and you know, give it to somebody else to win the game. Yeah. You know, and that I, I think that that lesson, being able to come back from that adversity, being able to recover quickly from failures, can apply to anybody yeah. in, in in whatever field that you're in. Exactly. That's huge right there. I never really dove into that aspect of like you said, batting three hundred, you know, you fail a good amount of times. Right. I never looked at that and really realized how quickly a baseball player needs to get back, get yeah. back, get back, get back. So I, I love that. Just to dive into that with people more so, you know, everyone talks about how many times, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back. No one talks about how many times they failed and you just brought light to it. And I can remember specific people that everyone looks up to, whether it's a, you know, he was a baseball player. Michael Jordan said a quote where, um, I failed this many times. You know, I've missed the game winning shots. I've missed all this stuff. And that 
I was a, a basketball player growing up. That stuck out to me. And I, it never really truly stuck out to me until what you just said, where we fail so many times. People are going to celebrate the accomplishments. When people are celebrating the accomplishments, they don't care how many times you failed. Right. If we can get past that mindset where, you know what, all right, you know, I've missed this many hits. I haven't, I haven't touched the ball tonight. Yeah. And yet there's an opportunity to get the game winning a home run for that matter. Mm -hmm. What are you going to focus on? The opportunity, like we just talked about preparing, getting there. Where the more you prepare, the more failure doesn't affect right. you. Because yes, you may fail, but it's not in your mind as much because, all right, I got all this practice behind me. That goes for baseball, it goes for the gym, that goes for a test in school, that goes for anything for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that major point right there, Matt, like I love that. It's yeah. huge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's the reality of it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in light of that failure question, a quote that you put on Instagram, I made sure I wrote this thing down because it inspired me and I know it's gonna inspire people. Don't let your performance on the field, in the office, or in the classroom affect how you feel about yourself as a person. Life is too short to judge yourself as a human on your performance as a professional. Please dive into that. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because, and I'm glad you saw it, and I'm mm. glad it meant something to you because that is something that I see day in and day out mm. um, in minor league baseball, in baseball, in college baseball, in high school baseball, yeah. in football, in everything, you know, um, in business, everywhere. Yeah. That is a huge problem that plagues the, the human species. Yeah. Right? Exactly. There is a major divide mm -hmm. between a human being, who they are, right, confidence, yeah. everything about them. Yeah and what they do. So true. There's a huge difference. Mm. Unfortunately, there is a large connection between the two, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we don't want that because, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm having a tough time formulating no. this because yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly important to me. It's a powerful message. You know, it is. And yeah. I, I wanna make sure that, I'm, that I say it right yeah. because I, I play with some guys that are awesome. Yeah. Some of my best friends. Nice. They're some of the best people in the world. Yeah. If they go 0 for 4 in a game, mm. you can't talk to them for two days. Mm, gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, you know, someone has a bad day at the office, they come home, they take it out on their family, they take it out on other people. It's true. There has to be an ability yeah. to shut down the business side mm. and the personal and the emotional side. It's true. And by that quote, what, I, what I'm trying to say is there has to be a separation, yeah. right? And I, you know, I bring it back to, to, to college. I learned a ton in college. I play for debatably the best college baseball coach in history. Nice, yeah. Uh, Tim Corbin at Vanderbilt. Awesome. And what, what Coach Corbin is all about is the mental aspect, the mental approach to, to you know, I wanna say the game, but more so life. Yeah. And you know, he said something that always stuck with me, and it was this. And and, and it, I'm bringing this up because it is going to define that quote. Mm. Um, you show up to the field, right? You're in your clothes, as you are. Mm -hmm. Th this is, you know, this is this is Rhett Wiseman. These are my Rhett Wiseman clothes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I show up to the ballpark. I put on my baseball uniform. I'm a baseball player. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever I do in that baseball uniform stays on the field. Yeah. That's it. Whatever I do there, it stays on the field. I don't, after I leave my job, I don't wear that uniform home. Mm. So when I take that uniform off, everything that happened in that uniform, yeah. emotion wise, everything that happened stays in that uniform. That's awesome. When I take these clothes off in the locker room and put that uniform on, mm -hmm. every problem that I have in my Ooh, life, yeah. all the good stuff, the bad stuff, me, yeah. stays in these clothes. Mm. I don't bring any of that to the field. Yeah. And it's a two-way street, right? Yeah. If I'm having you know, girlfriend relationship problems, mm -hmm. if I'm having issues off the field, if my dog is sick, mm -hmm. and then I bring that to the field, yeah. it's gonna affect how I play. It's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if I'm having baseball problems 
and I'm playing poorly and yeah. I'm you know not where I want to be on the field and I bring that home and take it out on my relationships yeah. off the field mm. and I create problems in my relationships yeah it's it's you know it's the same thing it's true so when I say that quote right about separating who you are as a professional and who you are as a person yeah that's what I mean by that mm. and what I've found is if you can separate the two of them, yeah. you will be a much, much happier person. So true. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, I couldn't say any better myself. In light of that, have there been times where you have taken that step and separated the two and you're just there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, because exactly. you can have a really, really good performance in the office, on the field, sure. you know, and you want to live off that high. Oh yeah, you exactly. know, you want to live off that. But then, when you have the opposite, yep. and you have a bad day. Yeah, it's like oof. It's true. You know, I forget it. Get yeah. rid of it. Check it at the door. Yeah, be done with it. Yeah, you know, it's people. So many people in the world today live for the accomplishments and not for the journey that they're on. Right. And if you live for the journey that you're on, you're gonna find joy in the present moment. Right where you can truly be separate, where it's like, all right, you know, whether it is on the field or in the office or in the classroom, like you said, your quote, if you can stay separate, you're gonna enjoy that. I don't care if I got an F on that test. Right. I don't care if I just bombed that sales meeting. Right. I don't care if I just missed the game win. Hold right. On. You know, I'm still me. Right. You know, and, a lot, and to build off another point that you mentioned, you know, you go to a, a party, you go to a gathering, you go to a big meeting, whatever it is, and people go, oh, who are you? 99% of the world answer that question with what they do. Right. And it comes back to your, your thing. If you can separate who you are from what you do, I, I believe not just happiness, but joy is there. It is. And if joy is there, your whole life becomes that much more peaceful. You're right. It's incredible. You're right. Yeah. Do you ever step into that to help separate you from the blessing and the curse of that competitive edge? You know, as much as you're separating yourself from who you are, from what you do, and you've accomplished that, just in how you carry yourself in this interview, I can see that you do, do you take that elsewhere. Right. You're very knowledgeable, you have your, your mind right, you don't have just your head and your shoulders, you have your mind right. Do you ever take a step to try to, because a lot of people do this, a lot of athletes do this, whether it's meditation, or you focus on other aspects, or it's a prayer life, or some aspect, but you're able to take that centered moment, find out, all right, I'm here right now. You know, I have a very difficult time shutting my brain off. Mm, okay. Yeah. I I have tried meditation. There have been a lot of things that I've tried. I am my mind is always going. Gotcha. And yeah. I always have to be doing something. I, I need that. a I need a project. I need to be doing a program. I need. Yeah, I yeah. cannot stop. I get that. Um, you know, I love just relaxing sometimes when I can. Yeah. But I have a difficult time doing that. Yeah. And that is just kind of who I am. I get that. Um, and, you know, it's a blessing and a curse yeah. because when I'm in a part of something, I, it has to succeed. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't allow it to fail. Mm. Right. I, I want it to be the best it can be. Yeah. But, and, you know, it's funny because that, that's it. Yeah. It's either, a success or yeah. you know there's no other I option get that. yeah so <laughs> when when i'm when my mind is like that even small things have to be done yeah perfectly they have to be done right mm -hmm. i have to make sure that they're done correct and i have to take them to their limits yeah you know um and that's just kind of who i am it's how i've that. always been yeah and i wish i could just you know sometimes i wish i wasn't like that, yeah you know I get you. but that's just that's kind yeah. of me it's tough too because yes you wish you weren't like that sometimes but it's that competitive edge that has escalated you to the level that you're at right you know right so it is you're 100 right it is a blessing and a curse but again you come back to that journey aspect you're on a journey just as much as right. to find out who you are not just what you do right right and that's a message that anyone can take right there where you know whether you are an athlete or in the office or like everything we keep mentioning you know, finding out who you are is a completely different game because we're all on a different journey that inter intersect at, all, at any point. Yep. That's how we were able to do this video together for you guys, the journey intersects, right? You know, you gain something from it, I gain something from it just in how we're talking. Mm -hmm. You know, this has inspired me so much and I hope other people have gained something from it, but you bring so much to the table, not just in a baseball standpoint. And I think your competitive edge has built that up in you. 
I think you're right. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 In light of that, who who do you think you can thank for helping you get to this level? Is it your family? Oh, you mentioned one coach, but right. who else? Well, I think, you know, I think my parents. Yeah, for sure. Nice. My parents are incredibly driven people. Awesome. They are um, they are very, very focused individuals as well. Mm. And they've definitely instilled that in me. That's awesome. They've instilled, you know, I, and, and Bill, I, I think the, the number one thing they've instilled in me is, is responsibility. Mm, okay. And I think not just responsibility to, you know, you know, uh, here's something nice, don't break it. Yeah. Not that kind of responsibility. Yeah. I'm talking real responsibility, like, meaning accountability. Yeah. Yeah, That's the real word. Yeah. They've given me accountability. Awesome. And that is probably the greatest thing that they've given me, it's that huge. they've instilled in me. Yeah. Because when I make a decision, it's mine. It's you. Exactly. You know, yeah. and what that has done for me is that's allowed me to make my own decisions yeah. and live by them. Yeah. Right? So I live and die by decisions that I make. Yep. And that's given me power. Mm -hmm. That's given me confidence. Yep. That's given me responsibility. Yeah. I, and, you know, I learned a lot of lessons like that mm. because I have no problem failing yeah. when it comes to if I learn from those failures. True. Yeah. You know, I always want to succeed, yeah. but I learn from those failures. I'm not afraid yeah. to fail. Mm -hmm. um, and I fail a ton. Yeah. You know, I do. Like yeah. we were talking about, exactly. if I have 10 at bats, you yeah. know, odds are I'm making outs at least seven times. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's, leaked into other parts of my life yeah. to where I'm not afraid to do things mm. because I'm okay living by the consequences of them. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and my parents were able to instill that in me at a young age. I don't know how. I was going to ask you, you know, that, how they uh, do it. <laughs> you know, by, by letting me make my own decisions yeah. and whatever I choose, I live with. Yeah. You know, obviously my parents guide me, mm -hmm. you know, or did when yeah, I was a kid. Exactly. Um, but they would let me live with the consequences sometimes. Yeah. You know, and I think that was the greatest gift they ever gave me That's because huge. now I can, you know, I I have confidence in the decision that decisions that I make. Yeah. Because I'm willing to live with the consequences. Exactly. Whether it's something small, whether yeah. it's something medium size, or whether it's something big. It's true. You know. Yeah. Um. And as a as a growing you know young man, yep. I think that. Um, that's something that a lot of young men today don't have. It's true. You know, there, yep. there isn't a lot of accountability. I, I think people in general, um, you know, they don't want to have the ability to make decisions because they don't want to be wrong. Yeah. They don't want to fail. They're afraid of failure. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the greatest gifts I was given was, you know, someone telling me, hey, it's okay to fail. Yeah. You know, that's okay. That's how we learn. That's yeah. how, you know, there's nobody successful in the world today that hasn't failed it's true you know yeah um and then you know tim corbin at vanderbilt he is you know he is built out of a different cloth nice he is different yeah and i was at vanderbilt for three years mm -hmm. um at vanderbilt it was all about mindset and beating people with your brains yeah okay. the strongest muscle in your that's body that's awesome right? 100%. yep um so what kind of values could he instill in us yeah. to make us superior mentally? Yeah. Because in the world, out in the business world, when you're done playing, there's going to be a day I put the uniform on it's for the true. last time. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, the mental approaches, the mental things that you learned at Vanderbilt, the mental game, the mental part of life mm -hmm. is with you no matter what field you're in. Yeah. Even when you're out in the business world, that is this is what separates people. Yeah. You know. 100%. And even at the level I'm playing at now, I play with people all the time that are more talented than me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but it's not what it's about. You get to a level mm -hmm. in every sport yeah. where, you know, that talent pretty much, you know, flatlines. Yeah. You know, it kind of goes up, wow, high school, college are more talented, pro they're more talented. You know, and then you get to a point where it, mm. it starts to even off. Yeah. And the biggest thing that separates guys is their is their, you know, mental fortitude. What they have between their ears is yeah. the biggest separator true. of players at that next level. Yeah, it's true. And I, I love that so much because the mindset or mental fortitude as you described it, 
it's you're you're right that separates people in the world as much as everything that we went over in this video of being able to separate who you are from what you do your mind is at the center of all that mm -hmm. right and i i want to build on that with what you said that your parents brought to the table of accountability and they won they let you live your life and so i want parents or coaches or anyone to catch this they let you live your life while instilling in you guidance and confidence you know as much as you're taking your steps as you did they were here no not that way not mm -hmm. that way got you to where you need to be and your confidence along the way built up your ability to make decisions in life and then going to your coach at vanderbilt he instilled you the mindset where you know at some point the game does come to an end and you're living your life that your parents built up for you right right that's where the mindset gets into play and you made a huge point too kids today are missing that mindset game mm -hmm. because accountability and confidence aren't instilled in them as much as it was in us growing up and our parents growing up right. self-esteem is at an all-time low for mm -hmm. so many not just kids people across the world and if we can start to change that i truly believe that that changes the game for everyone right yeah and you're just a huge example of that where the right people were there the people that need to be there were there and you learn the lessons but you were someone that were take that took the lessons and ran with it mm -hmm. that's why you're at the level you're at because your coach is still in you it's a mind game you know right and yeah. you know i i think the difference in kids now and it changes every year, it does. right? Yes. And it changes every generation. Yep. You have to understand that when a coach is getting on you, mm -hmm. right, they're expecting more out of you. Yeah. That's a compliment. It really is. You know? It really is. So when I was at Vanderbilt and the coaches were all over me because they expected more out of me. They saw that. You need to get better. Yeah. You need to get better. You're not very good. Mm. My freshman fall at Vanderbilt, I came in highly touted prospect as every player at Vanderbilt is. Okay. They have yep. the number one recruiting classes every single year. Yeah, and I came in there and I, I think I hit you know, you know one ten in the fall. Okay, led the team in strikeouts, led the team in errors. I was awful. Yeah, I was terrible, mm. and they expected more out of me, mm -hmm. and they were on me, on me, mm -hmm. and. When, when you're getting tore apart yeah. by your coaches, right? there's two ways you can go. Yeah, You can go this way and say, oh, why is he, he hates me, I don't wanna do this, mm -hmm. What what's happening, I'm over this, I don't need this. Yeah. Or you can say, okay, listen, yeah. I need to get better, Yeah, they think I can get better, he's putting his time and attention on me, because yeah. he expects more out of me. I need to start living up to that. Yeah. And that's the way that I went. Yep. And fortunately, that's the way a lot of guys at Vanderbilt go. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. But when you choose that road, yep. you realize that you are taking accountability for how you're playing. Yeah. I'm playing like crap. I'm you working like crap in the office. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as if I'm sitting at a desk. It's true. And my yeah. boss comes over to me and says, Hey, you're not doing it. Yeah. This is where we need you to be. Your work level's here. We expect this out of you. Yeah. How many people go, well, he walks away, the boss walks away, and they go, oh, well, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, screw that guy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, you know what? Taking an honest look at yourself and saying, I'm not living up to where I expect myself to be. Yeah. I'm not bringing it up to here. Yeah. I, need to, I need to elevate my level of play. I need to elevate my level of you know, expectation in this office. Yeah. And people do it. Yeah. And that goes for anything in it's your life. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I want any kid watching this right now to rewind that and listen to that again because it's so true. You have that choice. You can go this way or you can go this way and that way leads mm -hmm. up. And if you choose this way, yes, they may be hard on you. Yes, you may be questioning to yourself, should I even play the game anymore because you're so upset and you're angry at whatever the coach did or said to you. But there's a reason behind all of it because they see a skill in you, they see a talent in you, and they see why you can get to the next level. And you're an example of that. They've been hard on you, but look where you are now, mindset-wise. And, and Bill, it's hard. Yeah, it it's, is. It's it is. so easy mm -hmm. to just say, you know what? Yeah. Forget it. I'm gonna go back to yes. my house and play Warzone. Yep. I'm gonna go back and play Fortnite. Yeah. That's easy. It, exactly. It's so yeah. easy. and. You know, we're in this culture now where someone's saying something 
that you don't want to hear, you take your phone out and you go on Instagram. It's true. You know, if there's there's no there's not as much confrontation yeah. as there needs to be. There's exactly. not enough facing your own crap yep. as there needs to be. You yeah. know, there are so many distractions. Yeah. There's so many roads where you can take and make your brain feel happy yeah. and release oxytocin in another right. part of your, you know, of your day to where you don't have to deal with yeah. what's really happening. Yeah. You know, I remember at Vanderbilt, I would, I would wake up with night sweats mm -hmm. because I was having such a bad freshman fall. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to play again. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'm going to have to transfer. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I should have signed a professional contract at a high school. Yeah. Maybe they wouldn't have found me out. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fraud. I'm yeah. not as good of a baseball player as I thought I was. Uh -huh. You know, all those thoughts kicking in, kicking in, kicking in. Yeah. And that's normal. Yeah, exactly. That, that happens. Normal. 100%. You know, you have that, you know, that, you know, this, this bad voice over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. That's going to stay forever. Yeah. It's going to be there in everything that you do. Exactly. But it's learning how to listen to the positive voice. Yeah. And this voice, this bad voice is easy to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, that it's is, true. it's very easy. It's easy to hear that voice and say, okay, well, you know, I, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. I'm just not good enough. I can't do it. It's hard to listen to the voice over here that says, you need to get your butt in the weight room at 5 a.m. Yeah. You need to work out from 5 to 8. You need to start eating better. Yeah. You need to take care of your own BS. Yeah. You need to figure out your swing. Yeah. You need to get your arm strength up. You need to get faster. You need to get stronger. Mm -hmm. It's a hard road to take. It's true. But it's way more profitable. Exactly. And it pays off. And to build on what you just said, with you going through the process, and like I just said, I just, I just said that message to any kid watching this. Take what he just said again, where... If you choose that route to go up, it is hard. If you choose that route to go up, there will be failure. There will be those thoughts, you know, fear and prosperity are talking to you. I can choose to go to the weight room, choose to go to the dining hall and just eat whatever I want. I can choose to be disciplined, you know, again on that, I go to the dining hall and eat whatever I want. <laughs> right. You know, it's true. It's like, but as you take those steps up the ladder to your success, there will be those roadblocks. But that does not mean that you can't get either over them or straight through those roadblocks. And Red has been an example of that. Like you just said, those night sweats. You're not the only freshman that goes through that. No way. No. Oh my goodness. There, there's probably a good portion of the world that goes through that anxiety, that mm -hmm. questioning of, oh my goodness, am I good enough? Am I good enough? And then you start to get through that. You yeah. got through that roadblock. You started to put the work in. Prepared, just like our first message in this, you prepared, and then your success started to come. And those night sweats, I'm assuming, don't happen as much. No, they, they stop. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Failure may come, but success is right after it. Right. Right? 100%. Right. That's huge. I've kept you so long. I want to keep the conversation going. No, keep going but, as yeah. long as you want. Um, one, one final question. How about that? You've brought so many incredible, inspiring messages to the table here, you've accomplished so much just in your story and you still have a whole lot of story to write. So I'm gonna make it into two questions. First question, before the big powerful question after this, where do you see life going with baseball and after baseball? Because as much as I said 10 minutes ago, the game ends. With right. the mindset that you have, playing time may end, but I can see you being such an incredible coach for so many kids with the mindset you learned from your parents and Vanderbilt. Right. Is that down the line for you? Or do you see yourself going somewhere else? I don't know. You know, one of the biggest things that I try to do is I try and live in the moment as much Good as for I you. can. Good for and you. you know, I, I, what I, what I don't ever want to tr want to do is look towards the future. Mm, okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now I know people have five year plans and they 10 got year goals. Plans they got goals. And goals. Yeah. and goals are fine. Yeah. I have no problem with goals. Yeah. Um, I try and, you know, when I'm playing, I try and set team goals, nice. win a championship. That's yeah. the goal every year. Yeah. I don't try to hit an average number, a home run number, an RBI number. It's to win a championship. That yeah. is my goal year in, year out. Yeah. Because if my goal is to win a championship, yeah. I'll do everything in my power mm. to help us get there. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if, if I'm working in an office and my goal is to hit this number, you know, yeah. I might not hit it. Mm. But if my goal is is to be the best yep. and be the best office of whatever I'm doing, yeah. 
I'll hit that number by trying to be the best exactly. in every aspect. That's of that. huge. Yep. Um, so you know, I, I love I love teaching the game. I yep. love teaching uh, mental you know, the mental approach. I, I don't count that out. Um, and you know, it kind of goes off something you said earlier mm -hmm. that I, I wanted to touch on. We moved away from it, but you talked about the process. You talked mm -hmm. about um, you know living in the moment a little bit and not as much looking towards the future and mm -hmm. looking for success, but being in the moment yeah. and, and, and talking about the process. And I'm gonna steal this from you real yeah, quick. of course. Because this is something that we used to do in college. And the first time I ever saw this, it was pretty unbelievable to okay. me. Okay, yeah. So, you Run know, when people look back at this year, right, yeah. it'll be, and I, I hope everybody can see this. We'll um, hold it up, yep. We'll hold it up. But this is gonna be for everybody watching at home, right? Mm -hmm. 2020 to 2021, yep. okay? Now, every single experience mm -hmm. that you have yep. between these two years, the, the processes, yep. the experiences, the failures, the successes, yep. everything that is encompassed in this entire year mm -hmm. is right here. It's this little yes. dash. <laughs> Love it. It's that right there. Yeah. That is an entire year's worth of blood, sweat, yeah. tears, happiness, exactly. sadness, the process, yeah. everything. Yeah. So as much as, you know, oh, in 2024, mm -hmm. I'll be doing this. Yeah. In the future, I want to be doing this. It's all, let's, let's it's focus on there. this. Exactly. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. focus on the dash. That's awesome. Because that is what is our lives. Yeah. You know, if yeah. someone lives from 1901 to 2020, or, or you know, the dash. Yeah, yeah. That is their life. Exactly. You know, so that's huge. Every single day, I'm just trying to focus on that dash. Good for you. And and not look towards the end. Yeah. I don't look in the past. Yeah. It's just focusing every single day on on what's in front of me today. That's incredible. And that's honestly the perfect answer I could have ever asked for for the question I asked you with where the road goes. Because the road only goes where it will with what you do now. Right. In that dash, in the moment. So anyone watching that, take hold of that. He just wrote, you know, what is that? Nine, nine things on a piece of paper with a huge message behind it where what you do in the dash of your life is what's going to echo, you know, I'll take it further. What you do in the dash of your life will echo through eternity and what slaves stays behind for your family, for your kids, and so on and so forth, and for your memories in your mind. If you can sit there and truly say that in this present moment, I am living my life where I want it to be, I am living my life where it needs to be, you're going to enjoy yourself on a whole different level because you're putting the work in at that dash. You're trying to be the best and you will be the best because you're putting the work in in the moment to be the best. Right. That's where success comes. That's where joy comes. That's where a whole different avenue in life lives. That's huge. I love that. Yeah. 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 And that, you know, the first time I ever saw that, it's kind of an emotional thing. Yeah. You know, I remember sitting in, um, sitting in, we had a classroom at Vanderbilt mm -hmm. where we learned every day before practice. We'd, sat at, we, we'd sit in a, in a team meeting, right? We'd go over things that are going on in the world. We'd go over life lessons. We'd mm -hmm. go over our mental training. We'd go, after, go over our practice plan for the day. Yeah. One of the first meetings, we, we got in there, we sat down, and Coach Corbin said, this is the 2014-2015 Vanderbilt baseball team. Mm -hmm. We're all like, yeah, we yeah. know that. Yeah. He goes, I want you all to think about the experiences that you're going to have this year. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about everything i want you to think about the games i want you to think about the restaurants you'll eat at the experiences you'll make with with friends the the, the experiences you'll have with your teammates the yeah. workouts the practices everything and he goes you guys thinking about all that stuff all right. mm -hmm. he goes okay well all of that every single experience you have every emotion you feel everything that happens yeah. is symbolized by this dash right here. Mm. It was the dash in between the 2014, 2015 yeah. years on the on the whiteboard. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> you right? How <laughs> dare you yeah. put all that stuff yeah. into that little unremarkable mm -hmm. line? Mm 
Exactly. That's this big. Yeah. Right. And then you think about it. That's what your life is. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And if you're looking at the end, if you're looking at the end date, you know, if we were all sitting in that in that classroom, looking at the 2015. Yeah. Or looking at the 2014. Yeah. You know, we're not building that dash. We're not building those experiences. We're looking towards something. Yeah. And it's about right now. It's you know when. When I'm in this interview with you, I'm here. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm right here. Let's yep. do this. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's get stuff out there for people at home. Yep. If people are watching this, they want to get better. Exactly. They're watching this to better themselves. Yeah. And you know, you and I owe that to them. Mm -hmm. We're living right now yep. as these people at home are. Exactly. I love that. And you said it exactly. I, I say it to my life coaching clients all the time when they're getting struck with those thoughts that take you out of the present moment. I, I used to recite it back to myself, be here. And you just said that. If people can just be here, where you're not letting your past try and talk to you, you're not letting your future goals invade your, your thought processes, just be here. Your past negativity dissolves, which is the only thing that tries to get back to your past. And your future positivity, it gets closer to you. Right. Because you're here in the moment. You know, you're in that dash. And I, I again, I come back to it. I love it where that dash, it echoes so much because on the on the gravestone, whatever year span your life is, it's the dash. Right. You lived your life however you lived it. And if you're in the present moment, if you're being here now, you're going to gain so much more from life. And that's another thing I wanted to point out about, about you, Rhett, is... The coolest thing that I've gained from this entire interview, from my perspective, about you, is you were always in the present moment, and I don't know if you knew it, because you've brought up so many key points of what your coaches did, of what the accountability, the confidence that your parents instilled in you, of the experiences on the field or off the field, and you're able to pull them out. You're able to pull them out and bring the people. You're able to inspire people. You're able to motivate people because you one, you've been through it, but you lived through it. And you were, because why I say it that way is you were, you were there for them where you absorbed it to the point now where it's like, it's there to pull out. So many people live their life not there. Mm -hmm. They're not here. They miss out on things. You brought it up earlier where so many people are on, they can't escape. Escapism is so huge in the world. There's Instagram. I don't want to talk to that person. I'm just going to keep scrolling. You're distracting yourself. From my perspective, you gained so much and you have such a wealth of wisdom and knowledge you were there, you were here because you were there in the moment and it's just gonna keep growing. That's how we grow in life, by being in the present moment. Right. It's huge. And you know, I, if there was one thing I could say to people in any aspect of, of, their, of their world, of their life, you know, it is you cannot be afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the biggest issues that plagues us, yeah. you know, whether it's in sports, whether it's in business especially. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many remarkable people out there that do very unremarkable things yeah. because they are so crippled by that failure to, to, yeah. to, to fail. Yeah. Literally yeah. the, the idea of failure yep. makes them fail. It's true. You know, yeah. and you have to try and get rid of that. And it's so hard. It's so hard. Yeah. But, um, if you can eliminate that fear yeah. and jump into something and just do it, yeah. You'll find that, you know, you, if you're a, if you have the, you know, like we talked about mental yep. fortitude and you're a strong person, yep. you might not, not fail. Exactly. You might succeed and yep. you might end up doing exactly what you want to do with your life. Exactly. And that's, I think the choice people need to bring to themselves where what will happen if I don't choose to take this leap of faith and get rid of this fear and the possibility that I take it, I achieve everything I could ever want. Or I miss and I get that much closer. Or I don't choose to take that step and I fall to the wayside and I stay with the life of that. I stay in mediocrity. Right. And I, I believe humans as a society, we just, every single person, no matter who you are, whether you figure it out, yeah, you have a dream, you have a goal. There's something in you that wants to be better. I think we're designed like that to continue to grow because we're meant for more here in the world. If you can have that in front of you, why not take the leap right. of faith? Why not take that step? And like you said, the fear of failure. And if you can take that step, that comes back to so many 
echoes throughout eternity where this person took the leap. You know, I, I when I was training for to be a motivational speaker, one person that always stuck out to me was Les Brown. Because he said a quote that stuck out to me where if you shoot for the moon and you miss, don't worry because you land among the stars. Right. And if you take that leap of faith with whatever it is that you want to pursue for yourself and wherever you want your life to go, shoot for the moon. Because if you miss, you're that much closer and you're that much better because you've learned more from yourself. Did you fail if you took the leap? Possibly. But where are you now? You could be 10 steps further because you took a leap. Right. That so much comes and from And you it. know, and there is a, there's a comfortability. There is a, there is a, there is a comfort in average. Yeah. Right. Exactly. There is, there is a comfort in, I know my limitations and that's that. Yeah. And I'm not going to push them. Mm -hmm. And you can't get hurt mm -hmm. when you're in your comfort zone. It's true. You cannot get hurt. Yeah. You know, but that's mediocre. That's mediocrity. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Right? Not there's all. nothing wrong with that. I can't do that. Yeah. You know? Different and mindset. I, I can't. Mm -hmm. No matter what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, you don't have to. Yeah. Right? Exactly. It's one decision. That's all that it is. Yeah. Push yourself. Exactly. You don't have to live like that. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with it. No. You know, I meet if I meet ten people, eight of them yep. are totally fine and content yeah, living a life yeah. where you know they've never taken any risk and they are okay where they where they are mm -hmm. and everything's fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I would rather fail and have nothing yeah. and fail over and over and over again mm -hmm. than be average yeah. in anything that I do. Yeah. Exactly. I completely agree. And you know, he said it. There is nothing wrong with being where you're at. No, there's, absolutely. There's not. nothing wrong. There, I think so many generations before us. I don't want to say before us. I think there are there are people in every single generation that try to excel. But generations before us, they the goals for them was to reach that level where they can be comfortable, where you're escalating, escalating, and then you can cruise. Right. That's fine. That's that's a whole different mindset game. But there's. If you're truly trying to excel and push yourself, I don't want to say push yourself, if you're trying to pursue and build yourself to another level where financially free, joyfully happy with my family, living my life in the present moment where I can just experience everything, with whatever avenue you're going down, it takes a step to get there. Don't just sit on the couch. Take the step with whatever that means for you. And it doesn't have, you know, as much as we say leap of faith, it doesn't have to be a leap of faith. It could just be a baby step, baby step, and baby step. Because as you go throughout your life, if you're taking those baby steps, you will look back at the end of your life and realize that those baby steps were actually the leaps that you needed to take to get to where you are. Because it builds you into a stronger, better, happier, joyful, centered person. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's it huge. Is. Yeah. And you, like I said, I'll come back to it. Talking with you, you can feel that you've taken those steps. We went over all these steps that you've taken. And, you know, a, a final question I want to bring to the table. You kind of already answered it yourself. What is one lasting, inspiring, motivational, knowledgeable question that you want to leave with them? Because you've brought so much to the table for us. Whether it's separating who you are from what you do and being able to understand performance, being able to understand the mental fortitude of the game or mental fortitude of life for that matter, the confidence, the accountability that was instilled in you. What's the last message you want to leave with them? Preparation. Mm, yeah. Preparation. I think preparation is what leads to all of that. Mm. I think preparation in whatever you are about to embark on yep. is the 100% number one most important factor mm -hmm. because there is nothing, if you are prepared for something, there's nothing you cannot do. Yeah. If you're prepared to speak in front of 10,000 people, mm -hmm. you might have a little nerves, mm -hmm. you might have some jitters, mm -hmm. but you're locked in, yep. you're prepared. Exactly. I'm not throwing you out there, Bill. We're not, I'm not, if I grabbed you right now and said, hey, we're gonna walk out right here, there's gonna be 10,000 people, mm -hmm. you need to talk to them for an hour. Mm -hmm. You'd say, holy cow, <laughs> what am I gonna, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. But exactly. if I said, Bill, listen, yep. one month from today, 
there's going to be 10,000 people out there. Mm -hmm. I need you to get ready to talk to them. Yeah. And you said, okay. And every single day you sat in your office mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and just busted your tail yeah. every single day running through what you're going to talk about for a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know this. We're going to do this. In one month, 30 days from now, you'd say, I got it. Exactly. Let's go. Exactly. And that's the difference. And, and there is nothing to stop people. There's no excuse to not be prepared. It's true. There is no excuse. Yeah. You know, so if somebody has a meeting and they're presenting and they know a week ahead of time mm -hmm. and they show up and they don't do good at the meeting, guess what? Yeah. You didn't, you didn't know the material. You weren't prepared. Yeah. It's the same for a test. Every single person, person who is prepared for a test usually does pretty well. It's true. Right? Yeah. Um, so, and, 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 and I'll put it to you this way. If you are prepared and you fail, you did everything you could. Right. You were prepared. Yeah. It didn't go your way yeah. and you failed, but you did all the right things to do it. Exactly. You did all the right things that you needed to do to put yourself in a position to succeed. Exactly. Doesn't mean you're gonna succeed every time. Yeah. But the, the one thing that every single person can do is prepare. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with how you're wired. It has nothing to do with your, you know, your your mental capacity. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for winning. That yeah. has nothing to do with your competitive edge. That just has to do with with taking your time and putting your time into slots of your life mm -hmm. where you're making something important. Yeah. You're preparing for something at the end. Mm -hmm. You're this is my goal, I'm gonna prepare for it. Yep. If you're prepared, you're gonna be successful more often than yeah. not. That's awesome. That's huge right there. You know, it came to mind as you were saying that, and we'll close on this, the, the preparation factor. You can prepare as much as you can. You may still fail. The beauty of that is that if you fail after preparing so much, usually the better, greater opportunity was behind that. Right. Because you build yourself up to get there. Yes, you may have been knocked down. The right opportunity, I believe the door opens up for that one. You, were so, you could be supposed to fail in that first one because the right one that fits you better is next. Right. That's a whole different aspect of it, but that's huge. I love that. Guys, Rep brought so many incredible, incredible pieces to this. If you need to rewatch it, rewatch it because I think this thing has so much power behind it. And I, I just got to thank you so much for being here. Thanks brother. for having me. Yeah, seriously, Anytime. man. Yeah, yeah man. You, you bring so much knowledge, inspiration, motivation to the table. And it's so awesome to see that your accolades... In, in my opinion, your accolades aren't even on your mind, you know, because you're so focused on being here and making sure you're the best at every level. Being here for the interview, tomorrow's practice, tomorrow's weight training, whatever yeah. it may be, you're in the moment. Take that away, guys. Be in the moment. That's huge. I'm going to put your Instagram at the end of this for them, but right. is there anywhere else where you want them to find you, to watch any highlights, anything like that? Nope. Anybody can reach out anytime. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open to, you know, Phenomenal. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, Guys, like this message on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. If anyone popped in your mind when we were talking, an athlete, a kid, a coach, a family member, whatever it is, if someone popped in your mind, that's a clear-cut sign that this message is meant for them, share it to them. And lastly, hit that subscribe button. Let's get that number up. Let's share these videos to more people and help whoever we can. Let's motivate whoever we can. Let's inspire whoever we can. It's one click away, guys. Take that little baby step right there. And as always, if you or anyone you know is in need of a life coach to help you fill, get you from your current self to your desired self and help be the gap, to help you get through that gap for that matter, that dash mark that we talked about, go to BillyGLifeCoaching.com and I'll be right there for you guys. Have a good one. Thanks again, brother. My pleasure. Awesome. I've been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving.